So in this second video on integration, we'll be looking at how to find the equation of the curve when given dy dx and a point that lies on the curve. So in this video, we're going to be using integration as a method of reversing differentiating. In other words, we are working with the gradient function and we're trying to find the original equation of the line or the curve. In more instances, it's going to be the curve. Now, in order to do this, we need at least one coordinate that the line uh, that the lies on the line or the curve. So, note in some cases you might be told the uh, that the line or the curve crosses the x-axis at a particular point. So, let's say a. Then, if it does, then the coordinate is going to be a zero. If you've been given a point where it lies crosses the y-axis, so let's say b, then the coordinate is going to be zero b. And the reason for this is so that we can calculate the constant if there is one. Because if you think about when you are differentiating, you lose any constants um, that you may be having. So what we always need to find is if there is a constant, how do we go about finding that? And the only way you can do that is if you've been given a coordinate. So let's have a look uh, at an example. So in each of these, um, we, we use the information that's given to find the expression of y in terms of x. So in other words, we're going to be given dy dx and we need to find the original equation of y that when we differentiate it gives you the expression that's been given. So let's have a look at this first question. So first let's just get a decent colour pen. And then from this what we're then going to do is we need to, from dy dx, which I'm just going to write out again, so dy dx equals 10x plus 3. And then I'm going to work with the integral. So I'm going to increase the power by 1. So that becomes 10x squared. Divide by the new power. As I've got a constant, I'm going to increase that power of x by 1. And divide by 1. So in other words, what I've got is I've got y equals. And obviously one thing I have forgotten there, which is the most point of this particular video, is the plus c. So from this, I've got 5x squared plus 3x plus c. Now, this is what was discussed and what we ended up in from the previous video. But now what we're going to do is we're going to find out the value of this c, or in other words, the constant. Now, in order to do that, we need to use the coordinate that is going to be given to you. So if, in this case, x equals 2 and y equals 24, I'm going to end up with 24 equals 5 lots of 2 squared plus 3 lots of 2 plus this c. So working this out and simplifying, I get 24 equals 20 plus 6 plus c. So I've got 24 equals 26 plus c. So therefore, c is going to equal minus 2. So then from the original equation or the integration of the expression I've been given, it's going to be y equals 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now, without the coordinate, now if I had any expression of where it was y equals 5x squared plus 3x, then when I dy dx it, I'm going to end up with 10x plus 3 regardless. So that's why it's really, really important that we figure out what this constant is going to be. And that's why we go through the steps. And what you might find is that these particular type of questions are going to be worth um, a lot more marks than what they would be if it was a differentiation and you were going the other way around. So let's have a look at the next example. Well, I can see we have two and three on the same screen. So looking at question two, Again, we're going to start by differentiating or integrating, I should say, this point here. So I've got y equals, and again, with practice, you'll be able to go straight into, so increase the power by 1. And for the second one, that's going to turn to a 3 and divide by the new power and write plus c. Now, again, it's always worth at this stage to make sure that you are including the plus c. Uh, we don't, if we write it in brackets or forget it, there is a, a decent chance we are going to lose marks. So from this, I'm just going to simplify it. So I've got y equals 3x squared minus 4x cubed plus c. We didn't have to simplify it, but when I'm substituting numbers and plugging things into a calculator, the simpler the expression, the less likely I am going to make a mistake. So now what we need to do is find c. So we've got x equals 2, y equals minus 35. So I've got minus 35 equals 3 lots of 2 squared minus 4 lots of 2 cubed and plus c. So 
fill in this in, we've got minus 35 equals 12 uh, minus 32 plus C. So simplifying that, I've got minus 35 equals minus 20 plus C. So therefore, C is going to equal minus 15, giving me a final equation of Y equals 3X squared minus 4X cubed minus 15. And there is that final answer. For question three, again, I'm going to go through the process of integrating this. I've got 4x to the power of 4 over 4 plus 2x squared over 2 plus c. Simplifying that, I'm going to get x to the power of 4 plus x squared plus c. And then from this, I'm now going to use the two values I've been given. So I've got, uh, let's go for 3 to the power of 4 plus 3 squared plus c equals 91, in which I've got 3 to the power 4 is 81, plus 9, plus c equals 91, so therefore c equals 1, giving me a final equation of y equals x to the power 4, plus x squared, plus 1, and there is your final answer for that one. So again, going on to number 4, so you can see how there seems to be some repetitiveness in terms of some of these questions. It just takes a bit of practice. So again, we've got y equals increase the power by 1. And again, the constant in front doesn't make a difference. Over 6 minus 2x cubed over 3 plus c. So simplifying this, we get x to the power 6 minus, and again, the 2 and the 3 don't simplify, so I'm going to leave it as it is, plus c. And then now I need to do is substitute the values. So I've got minus 1 to the power of 6, minus 2, minus 1 cubed over 3, plus C. Minus 1, and that all equals 3. So I've got um, 1 minus, minus 1 cubed is minus 1. So that's going to leave me with positive 2 thirds, plus C equals 3. So then I've got 1 and 2 thirds plus C equals 3. So C is going to be a mixed number. I can leave it as a fraction. It's going to be 1 and a third, or 4 over 3. So then the answer to this particular question is going to be Y equals X to the power 6 minus 2X cubed over 3 plus 4 over 3. So the question 5 says that the gradient of the curve at point x, y on the curve is given by dy dx equals 3x squared plus 4. Given that the point 1, 7 lies on the curve, determine the equation of the curve. So don't let the x, y fool you. Uh, this is very, very similar to the question we've done previously. So this is our dy over dx, and this is the coordinate that we then need to find. And we've been asked to find the equation of the curve. So going through this, the first thing I want to do is I'm just quickly write what dy of dx is. So I've got 3x squared plus 4. So then working out y, so again, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, plus 4x plus c. And simplifying that, I get x cubed plus 4x plus c. Now, using this, what I then need to do is find the value of c. So this kind of resembles using y equals mx plus c to find the equation of a line, which you may have forgotten in coordinate geometry when you're usually encouraged to use y minus y1 equals x minus x1. So from this, what we're now going to do is substitute our coordinate. So we've got x equals 1. So we've got 1 cubed plus 4 lots of 1 plus c, and that equals 7. So sub working this out, we've got 1 plus 4 plus c equals 7. So I've got 5 plus c equals 7. So c equals 2, giving me an answer of y equals x cubed plus 4x plus 2 as the original equation. So let's have a look at another example. So let's have a look at number 6. So number six says, again, similar format. So the gradient of the curve at the point x, y is 16x cubed plus 2x plus 1. Given that the, the curve passes through the point uh, a half 3, find the equation of the curve. So this one's slightly different, only because it doesn't mention dy dx, but it does say the gradient of the curve at point. So basically, all this sentence here is basically saying it's giving you the gradient function. It's just another word for the gradient function at any point of x and y is represented by this equation here. 
So going through the steps, uh, so let's get these color pen. So we've got dy over dx equals 16x cubed plus 2x plus 1. So my y is going to equal 16x to the power of 4 over 4 plus 2x squared over 2 plus x plus c. And then simplifying this, which again I would definitely simplify before we start substituting values in, we get 4x to the power of 4 plus x squared plus x plus c. Using this, we're then going to substitute our coordinates in, which is a half 3. So I've got 4 and then a half to the power of 4 plus a half squared plus a half plus c equals 3. So working through this, um, again I'm going to use go straight on to using my calculator. And if I type that all in, I've got 4 and then I've got 0.5 to the power of 4 plus 0.5 squared plus 0.5 equals, and I get 1. So I've got 1 plus c equals 3, so therefore c equals 2, and again I've not finished. So I need to now use this equation, substitute my c value in, in which I've got y equals 4x to the power of 4 plus x squared plus x plus 2, and there is my final answer. Now, once you've mastered that, we can then slowly start moving into uh, more complicated questions, which is what leading on to these ones here. So these are what we call like the sort of extension type questions. So from this, it says that the curve has an equation which satisfies that the second derivative is 6x minus 4. The point P to 11 lies on the curve and the gradient of the curve at this point P is 9. Determine the equation of the curve. So this is going to involve quite a lot of steps. So the first thing we need to establish is that when we've got the second derivative, every time we differentiate, we're always going to lose a potential constant. So this has told me that it's 6x to the minus 4 and we've got dy over dx now again I'm going to integrate this to get the first derivative so I'm going to have 6x squared over 2 plus 4x and if I simplify that I get 3x squared plus 4x plus c now from this we know and we've been told that the gradient at point p so at point p x equals 2 that dy over dx equals 9. So from this that when x equals 2 dy over dx is going to equal 9. So here what I've got is I'm going to substitute 9 into, uh, sorry not 9, I'm going to substitute 2 into this particular my dy dx and make it equal to 9. So in other words what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it equal to 9 and I'm going to swap x for 2. Do I want to keep that in 1? So doing exactly that, I've got 3 lots of 2 squared plus 4 lots of 2 plus c equals 9. And working this out, I've got 12 plus 8 plus c equals 9. So I've got 20 plus c equals 9. So therefore c equals minus uh, 11. So from this, once I know that we've got minus 11, so I can cross that and put minus 11. So I know that dy over dx is equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 11. And now what I'm now going to do is using the coordinates of p, so now I'm kind of in like I've done in the previous questions, I'm going to work with dy dx equals this, and I've got the, using the corner of 2, 11 to find out what the constant is. So what I'm going to do is I just get rid of all of this and so if I just write dy over dx equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 11 plus c and then what I'm then going to do is well actually there's no plus c I don't know why I've written that there and so if I integrate this I get y equals 3x cubed over 3 plus 4x squared over 2 minus 11x plus c. Now in order to work out what the c is, 
what I need to do is substitute the coordinates of P, which is 2, 11. So again, what I'm going to do is just get rid of all of this, which hopefully you wouldn't have got rid of, which just case just finding it all on the screen. And there we go. And so working with this, I've got y equals x cubed plus 2x squared uh, minus 11x plus c. And I'm going to substitute the coordinates of 2, 11. So I've got 11 equals 2 cubed plus 2, 2 squared minus 11 times 2 plus c. And simplifying that, get 11 equals 8 plus 8 minus 22 plus c. So I get 11 equals, and again, I've got 8 plus 8, which is 16, minus 22, which gives me minus 6. I don't know why I keep forgetting that plus. Let's just get rid of equals, and then I've got minus 6 plus C. So C, therefore, is going to equal 17. So I'm still not finished. So the, the answer to this question is Y equals, and it's going to be X cubed plus 2X squared minus 11X plus 17 and that there is the final answer. So from question 7 it says that a curve has the equation of that satisfies that the second derivative equals 6x minus 4 and the point P lies on the curve and has a gradient of a curve at that particular point equals 9. Determine the equation of the curve. So this is going to require a few extra steps before we get to the same platform as what we've done with the previous questions. So let's have a look at working this out. So we know straight away that we need dy dx. So in terms of highlighting the key bits of information, that is what I've got and that is what I'm wanting to find. So let's work with the second derivative first, because obviously we've been given that for a reason. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to do these questions twice. So the first thing we need to do is find out what dy over dx is. So what, find out what the gradient function is. So again, I'm going to integrate the second derivative. So I get 6x squared over 2 minus 4x plus c. Now, from this, I'm going to use the fact that dy dx, so in other words, what we've worked out is that dy over dx equals 9 when x equals um, 2. So we're not, we've got no inkling, we don't really need to know what the 11 is in terms of the y-ordinate, so we're just going to use this. So I've got that, if I simplify this, I get 3x squared minus 4x plus c equals, in this case it's going to be 9, when x equals 2. So let's just substitute 2 in, so I've got 3, 2 squared minus 4 lots of 2 plus c equals 9, so I've got uh, 12 minus 8 plus c equals 9, so I've got 4 plus c equals 9, so c equals 5. So from this, what I've then got, and if I now substitute this c and cross that out and change that to a plus 5, then now what I've done is I've got my coordinate, which is 2 minus 12, uh, 2, um, 11, and I've got my dy dx. So from this, I've got that my dy over dx equals 3x uh, squared minus 4x plus 5. And then I've got, so y is going to equal, now if I integrate this now, I'm going to get 3x cubed divided by 3 minus 4x squared over 2 plus 5x plus c. So now if I just go on to simplify this, and I'll just simplify it here, so the 3s cancel out. 4 cancels out, so I'm just left with 2, and I'm left with that. So I've got y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus c. Now I'm going to now substitute the coordinate of p, so I know that when x equals 2, y equals 11. So I've got, I'm going to just reflip this around, so I've got the y at the easy, because it's easier for me to solve. So I've got 2 cubed minus 2 lots of 2 squared plus 5 lots of 2 plus c, and that all equals 11. So simplifying this, I get 8 minus 8 plus 10 plus c equals 11, in which what I end up is with c equals 1. Now, I still haven't finished the question because I need to, work, uh, need to simplify it. 
and I just need to highlight the fact because the question is asking me to work out what the equation is and I've still not written it yet so using this that I've worked out previously hopefully yours is a heck of a lot neater than mine I get y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 1 as my original equation So looking at the final uh, equation, or final example I should say in this particular set, so it says the curve has the equation of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and it passes through the points of p, 2, 6, and q, 3, 16, and has a gradient of 7 at point p. Find the values of the constants a, b, and c. Now, if you can work with algebra, then your understanding of this particular topic is going to be absolutely spot on. Now, obviously, because I've got a lot of variables, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's going to cancel down? How do I know what to do? Well, let's have a look. So if we break the question up, we know that the original equation is this, and I need to find out what a, b, and c are. Now, I've been given two coordinates, and I know that the gradient is 7, also known basically what this means is that when dy over dx, and that equal and x equals at p, which is 2, that that is going to equal 7. So that's basically what that bit of information is telling me. And I've been given these two extra coordinates. So my initial thoughts of guessing that I'm probably going to end up with working out what one of the letters are and then potentially substituting the coordinates of P, the coordinates of Q to some form of some um, simultaneous equations and then solving it that way. So let's have a look as we go through. So first thing we want to do is find out what dy dx is. So let me just start off by writing out what y equals. And so dy over dx is going to equal ax squared plus bx. Uh, no, it's not. It's going to equal 2ax plus b. Now I know that when x equals 2, that the gradient function dy dx is going to equal 7. So if I then substitute, um, and again I'm going to completely and utterly repeat myself, uh, because this is what you should be writing and making sure you're including on this. So then what I've got is I've got 2a and I've got 2 plus b equals 7. So in other words, I've got 4a plus b equals 7. So that's one potential equation that I've got. So working with the rest of them, let's have a look. So we can substitute the numbers in. So we know that these points lie in. So for example, if I'm using point P, which is 2, 6. So basically when X equals 2, Y is going to equal 6. So I've got um, 4A plus 2B plus C and that equals 6. So that's one equation that I've got. And then I've got the using Q, which is 3, 16. Uh, we've got that, and again, so I've got 3, oh, I'm going to have, sorry, 9A. plus 3b plus c and that equals 16. So they're the three bits of information that I've got. Now what I'm now going to do is obviously I can't, in order for me to solve an equation with three unknowns, I need three equations. At the moment, although I've got three, so this is my first one, this is my second one, and this is my third one. What I'm now going to do is using hashtag one, I'm going to write one of the letters as the subject, so I'm going to write that uh, b equals 7 minus 4a. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that into these two equations. So in terms of hashtag two, if I substitute b equals wherever I see a b, I'm going to swap it with 7 minus 4a. So I've got 4a plus two lots of 7 minus 4a plus c equals 6. Now if I then go on to simplify this, I get 4a plus 14 minus 8a plus c equals 6. And again, simplifying it further, 
I get minus 4a plus c equals minus 8. So that's one equation. Now if I do the exact same for hashtag 3, so I've got 9a plus 3 lots of 7 minus 4a equal, uh, plus c equals 16. Then again, multiplying out, I get 9a plus 21 minus 12a plus c equals 16. Simplifying this, I get minus 3a uh, plus c equals minus, and it's going to be 5. Now, just creating a little bit of space, I'm just going to move the screen upwards because basically I've got my two equations. Now, you may, you might want to rearrange them. It's entirely up to you, so I'm just going to write it a little bit easier. So I've got C minus 4A by swapping those two things around. And I've got C minus 3A equals minus 5. Now, as the C's are the same, I'm going to take them away. So I've got 0, the C's cancel, minus 4, minus minus 3 gives me a plus 3. So I've got minus A equals minus 3. So A equals 3. So I've got one value here. Then when A equals 3, now just picking any of these equations, so let's just go for this top one here. We've got C minus 4A equals minus 8. So we've got C minus 12 equals minus 8. So C equals 4. And then I've got two of the values, so the next thing I then need to do is work out what B is. And so using another equation that actually involves B, so I could use, I can go for this one, because of B that I'm trying to find. So I'm going to use hashtag 1. So I've got B equals, I'm not even set to the pen. So I've got B my equals 7 minus 4A. So when A equals 3, I'm going to end up with B equals 7 minus 12. So B equals minus five so then finishing this up of the original equation which was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c gives me a final equation of y equals 3x squared my uh, minus 5x plus 4 and there is your final answer. So big of a big question. This question will be worth quite a lot of marks, as you can see, because we've done a lot of thinking. But again, it's just a case of breaking the questions up, using the information that's there, figuring out from practice what information have I worked with to get to the final conclusion, and then working your way to get those kind of steps. And sometimes breaking the problem up and making it easier by asking yourself, well, what would make this question easier? So for example, either second derivative, well, what would make this question easier if I had the first derivative? And then I could just do what I have done previously. And that's good sort of problem solving skills of where you're thinking, how can I make this question easier? If I had this, I'd make it easier. Then that's what you do. You go out and find those things. And hopefully that give you some direction to answer the actual question that's being asked.